All right, let's try and fix that garbage ping of yours. Here's some more obvious ways to do it and some less obvious ways to do it. Let's jump into it. This is mostly going to be for FPS games and MOBA, you know, CSGO, Valorant, uh, League of Legends, etc. Latency is only important for online gaming and voice over IP, really. Um, it doesn't matter if you have a delay when you're watching Netflix. It's going to buffer ahead. Same with YouTube. If you have a 100 millisecond, 200 millisecond delay when you're watching Netflix or YouTube, it's not a big deal. It only matters when you're gaming. So here we go. Here are my pointers for it. First, know your Wi-Fi. You need to know that Wi-Fi is half duplex and it will always have a higher latency. So I say most Wi-Fi. I'll get into the exception later. But it has higher latency because it cannot transmit and receive at the same time because it's half duplex. As opposed to being cabled up or with an Ethernet cable, you can run full duplex. You're transmitting and receiving at the same time two very important things at the same time without having to quickly switch back and forth like we do with Wi-Fi. Um, so if you're stuck on Wi-Fi and you can't get a cable to your computer to try and help your ping out, you can switch to a Powerline Ethernet box. And I'll show you what those are right here. So with a Powerline Ethernet adapter, you would plug one in next to your modem or router, say it's downstairs, and let's say your computer is upstairs on the second story or something, somewhere far away where you cannot normally run an Ethernet cable. You'd plug one in next to your modem, the other one would go next to your computer, and in them they have one, sometimes they have multiple Ethernet jacks as you can see here. You'd plug an Ethernet cable into that, the other end would go into your router, and then up by your computer, you'd plug an Ethernet uh, cable into the one up by your computer and that would run into your computer. So the way that these work is by operating on a higher frequency than the electricity on the power lines and all your power lines in your house are connected so you technically can pass data on them. Um, there's no interference, they run just like an Ethernet cable. As you can see here they run a gigabit per second and um, it's just like having an Ethernet connection from your modem to your computer and I would highly highly recommend these if you cannot get a get a normal ethernet cable there and you're running wireless right now just because it's going to be a relatively cheap upgrade compared to trying to go to some advanced wireless system or running cables through your walls and BS like that this is a really quick and easy way to get ethernet level performance um, on the cheap all right my next point is do not buy those Wi-Fi range extenders they are absolute trash and in my opinion borderline scams they do not speed up your network connection they operate on half duplex as well so it's a half duplex device connecting to half duplex wireless because they wirelessly connect to your um, your router's SSID so it's like running a quarter duplex these things they do not work at all do not buy them instead buy a mesh Wi-Fi system and the difference between a Wi-Fi extender and a Wi-Fi mesh system, the mesh systems have, usually they come in two or three nodes that you would place in your house, and the nodes communicate with each other at full duplex. They have a two by two antenna, so it's it can transmit and receive at full speed between the nodes. Um, typically the older ones that aren't Wi-Fi six are gonna be um, still half duplex to the host, but you can now, by Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax, they provide full duplex to the host and are much faster. They're, I'm not going to say they're Ethernet speeds. They can potentially be Ethernet speeds, but you're still going to get inf interference. And I would still probably recommend the, the power line situation or the power line Ethernet adapter rather than going Wi-Fi 6 if your ultimate goal is gaming performance. But if you have no other option but to stick with Wi-Fi, then upgrading to Wi-Fi 6 is a big upgrade over over 802.11 AC or the older Wi-Fi standard. Make sure you have a compatible NIC card um, because since it's a uh, full duplex solution, the NIC card in the computer or in the cell phone, whatever, has to have a two by two antenna as well to connect full duplex to the access point. Here's some prices from some, this is an older um, 802.11 AC Google Wi-Fi mesh system. You can see it's about 150 bucks cheaper. This is a Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11 AX solution. All right, next, remove any sources of interference if possible. That would include metal filing cabinets. Yes, if they're just sitting next to your computer, especially if they're close to your 
uh, Wi-Fi adapter, that makes a big difference. Metal doors, maybe in dorm rooms. If you can open a metal door to just give it a little bit of extra room for the Wi-Fi signal, that helps. Um, microwaves make a difference and portable phones being near your computer also make a difference because they operate usually on the same frequency range. Also be aware of plaster and lath, especially plaster and lath that has chicken wire in it. I'll show you a picture of that. Here's the filing cabinet microwave. Plaster and lath with chicken wire in it is absolutely brutal on Wi-Fi signals. Um, if you're in a house that's perpetually got terrible Wi-Fi and your house was built, you know, before the 1970s, you might have plaster and lath with a, with a chicken wire in it. And if that's what you have, good luck because it absolutely annihilates Wi-Fi signal. And if you're, if you're two rooms down, you're, you're in trouble with it. Um, so definitely try a wired solution if possible, if you have that situation. All right, now let's do the obvious things to help improve our internet connection and our latency. First, shut down active programs and audit your computer. Do you have junky programs running in the background? Do you have things that should have been installed, uninstalled maybe a little while ago? Take them out and clean up your computer every once in a while. We both know you should do it, just do it. Set your active hours in the window, Windows Update settings. It defaults to not do any updates between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. because those are the working hours. But if you're gaming, you know, 9 p.m. to 3 a.m., then you're going to want to change your Windows update settings to not bug you during the times that you're gaming. You know what I mean? Okay, and then identify, is this only happening in one game? Maybe the problem isn't your internet. Maybe the problem is the game. This actually happened with Valorant. When it first came out, there was a bug causing certain people to spike up if they had weak connections. Um, but they would work fine in CSGO and then they'd go to Valorant and they'd have terrible traffic spikes and ping spikes um, because there was a bug in Valorant causing it to saturate uplink, upload links. And um, just be aware of stuff like that. If you're playing maybe an obscure game, it could just be the game causing the problems. Next, yell at your mom. Tell her to stop watching Netflix. That'll help. And don't use those lame killer branded Nick cards. They don't work. If you want a good if, if your NIC card on your motherboard is acting up or you feel like it should be changed, check out um, a PCIe card. And if you're going to get a PCIe card, probably go with Intel or at least a brand name. Don't or like a real brand name, not killer. Um, Intel is really good. They always have good driver support. They've been making them forever. Um, TP-Link would be another good one. They're mostly wireless, but just stick with a good brand, a normal brand. Don't buy some Starshine five dollars on amazon bs like get something real okay do the difficult this step is um very helpful if you're in a family and people like to use netflix people like to download movies people like to do this and this and this and you're trying to play csgo with a normal ping and constantly yelling at people to stop downloading things most routers um even just consumer ones have an ability to adjust QoS or rate shaping policies on the router. And what that means is that you can set it to favor certain traffic over others. And this is used for voice over IP and companies as well. In like a commercial environment, if you're using voice over IP, you would set up the phones to have priority over people just surfing the web or doing things on their computer because having a phone conversation over the internet needs to be low latency and it needs to be the favored traffic while traversing that network. So setting this up is going to change from router to router, depending on what brand you have. Um, I personally use a PFSense firewall, and they actually have a little snippet on uh, reducing gaming lag by using their rate shaping or policers. They say the shaper also has options to give priority to the traffic associated with network gaming, similar to prioritizing VoIP calls. The effect is that even if users on the network are downloading while playing, the response time of the game should still be nearly as fast as the rest of the as if the rest of the connection were idle. So even if somebody, say you have a 100 megabit connection, if somebody is using up that entire 100 megabit connection, and you come in and you want to play CS:GO and it's going to take three megabits, it will slice out that three megabits for you to play and only give that person 97 megabits, and it'll continually slice out chunks to make sure that the favored traffic gets um, what you configure it to get. Here's a quick example of me doing it on my PFSense firewall. Keep in mind it's going to be different for every type of firewall or router. 
Um, also, you'll need to be able to log into your router. I know kids living with their parents or whatever um, could be harder, but you know, if you have a third party router, it's probably the default uh, login, admin, admin, or root, root type of thing. You can also look up the type of router you have. It's going to show you what the default login is. And then once you get into your router and you can find the QoS or the rate shaping policies, um, just look up a guide and it's going to show you how to do the process. So you can see me here. I'm doing, I can set, I could set a rate shaping policy for peer to peer networking. I could limit that type of traffic to favor, favor other types of traffic here. I can, here you can see the network games and there's a list of network games. So it's going to look for the games that match that type of traffic. And you know, if I click, I clicked steam at the top, it's going to favor that type of traffic and give me priority leaving my network to make sure my wife or my kids on Netflix or whatever, aren't going to slow down my traffic. And then you just click okay a couple times and you're done. All right, now let's do the annoying part to fix our internet. And that would include calling your ISP to complain that your ping always sucks. And yeah, this is annoying. Um, you will have to escalate the trouble. Bad pings will involve uh, routing. Routing will involve BGP or border gateway protocol. No first line help desk person is going to be doing anything with BGP. Um, so it's going to need to get es escalated to a network engineer at somewhere in the company and just pray that you get connected with someone that cares about latency because it's not that common on the internet. ISPs mostly care about just connectivity and making sure things aren't breaking. They're not that concerned about bad routes um, or latency. Next, let's make sure that our latency inside the network isn't bad. You might want to do this before you call your ISP actually. So ping your own router first. Um, usually it's going to be 192.168.1.1 or 192.168.0.1. Anyways, I'm sure you can Google around if you don't know how to ping your own router. So if you have a wired connection, you should expect a reply from your router in under three milliseconds and maybe even quicker than that with wireless, um, 802.11 AC and below or worse, it'll be under 20 milliseconds. So that just gives an example of latency that'll get introduced before it even leaves your house. Um, I don't have anything with wireless 802.11 AX, so I can't test the response time for that right now, but um, just know that you're probably going to get, you know, a five X increase just from a wireless, just from staying on wireless over being wired. Also know that at the ISP, your direct ISP or um, that you pay your monthly subscription to, the problem might not actually be with them. It could be who they hand their internet traffic off to. They may be partnered with somebody that has a bad route to a server. Say you live in Toronto and you want to connect to a server in Georgia. Um, your ISP in Toronto is doing everything right. They're handing off to the next level ISP. They're taking the traffic, but then that next level is sending that traffic in a circle and it's not going directly to its destination. If that's your problem, God help you because trying to get the ISP to work with the other ISP and troubleshoot a network problem um, is a nightmare. You might you might actually just switch ISPs if that's the case, to be honest. All right. When you talk to your ISP, it is actually helpful to bring a trace route. Um, so here, here's a quick example of some trace routes. This one is going from right here, Georgia. Let me get my highlighter. Okay. Starting in Georgia. Is that a highlighter? Pink. What the f It's an eraser. Okay, let's start in Georgia. See, it goes up, looks like it stops in New York, goes to Boston, comes back to New York, and then goes to Toronto. So there's a little bit of an inefficiency there. You could see it'd be more efficient to go Georgia, New York, Toronto, but it's not doing that. Um, it could also be worse. It could be Georgia, New York, Chicago, Georgia, Boston, Toronto. And that's really where ping problems come in and you're going to get terrible latency. Um, you can check this out with a trace route from your computer. So here's a trace route that I ran from my computer. You just open a command prompt, trace RT, and then go to google.ca or whatever. If you're playing CSGO, you're going to know the IP. And if you're playing Valorant, it's going to be a little bit harder. I don't know if you can get the IP of a Valorant server. But CSGO, you can ping the server you're playing on. You can find out the IP of it. 
and you can see the route that it'll take. So this is going through the Toronto Internet Exchange and getting to its destination. This was run with a VPN on and this was run with my VPN off down here. And just to show you the difference between the two. If you're really desperate and you're not getting anywhere with your ISP, you can do what this guy did. This is the top upvoted comment on the networking subreddit, uh, top upvoted of all time. He was having bad ping on Steam servers for CSGO, asked in the networking forum what could cause that, and then the top comment, the guy says, hey, how's it look now? And the dude had changed the BGP settings um, to peer better with Steam for that particular ISP. I don't think they ever actually mentioned which ISP it was, but he was able to adjust the BGP. He noticed a route inefficiency and um, created a better path to the Steam servers for this guy living in Seattle. All right, next will be take a chance. If your ISP won't help you, try taking a chance with a VPN. The way this works is that if you pay for a VPN provider, you get a direct connection to them. So it'll be somewhere near your house. Um, for me, it'll be Toronto. They can possibly have different routes to the destination than just your ISP would have. So if I'm connecting from Toronto to Georgia and my ISP has just totally effed up the connection between the two locations, I can try VPNing to a server in Toronto and maybe my VPN provider has a better route out of Toronto that'll more directly connect to the server in Georgia or wherever. That's the idea. The speed of your internet will be slower because you're encrypting all your traffic with the VPN, but the latency might improve. You also have another layer that you can complain to. You can complain to the VPN provider and say, hey, I think your route between here and here is bad. And they might listen, they might not, but I mean, your chances with them are just as good as with your ISP. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you were interested in any of the mesh Wi-Fi stuff that I talked about, I have some links in the description for that. If you're interested in becoming a patron, um, I got links in the description for that. And leave a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you want to do, let me know. And I'll see you next video. Thanks, bye.